First, we have our art segment with Philip Morris, our host. Philip will be interviewing Darlene Myers. Darlene is the artistic director of the Northeast Ballet, and they'll be talking about the 25th anniversary of the Nutcracker here at Proctor's Theater. Welcome to Impact. I'm Philip Morris, and our guest today is Darlene Meyer, founder of Northeast Ballet, among other things, Meyer's Dance. And uh, we're delighted to have you back, Darlene. How are you? I'm great. Thank you, Philip, for inviting me back. Now, last time we talked about you as much as we could, and you told us some of your story of becoming a dancer, your support from your father, which was all pretty remarkable, actually, I thought. This time, uh, we're going to focus a little bit on the thing that you have um, made kind of your reputation around, which is our annual joint venture with Northeast Ballet and Proctors and the Nutcracker. Yes, this is our 25th uh, silver anniversary. Hard to believe, but true, coming up. Uh, big gala uh, for us, and uh, very honored to be at Proctor's again. So, so first, how did this thing that Tchaikovsky wrote become the holiday standard? Well, it was first a book, and then uh, the lyrics, uh, uh, really, there were none. There were, it was just uh, a book, very much like um, the process that we do with Proctors, um, uh, Stories of Dance, very much the same process where a story is taken and then music is inspired by the story and then a dance was inspired. So it's really three creative different processes uh, in Russia in the late 1800s and I think because it was around the holidays and we all, whatever uh, religion we believe in, um, celebrate the holidays during that time period, it, it really touches all of us um, in some way, shape of, or form because it's a dream of a young girl. And I think it, it just is universal. And um, uh, in every city in America, celebrates in some way around the Nutcracker. It's kind of an amazing thing. And for us to have done it for 25 years, you have done it 25 years, is a pretty awesome thing. So your gala, who's the special guest? Yes, we have a very special guest. My first um, student who became a professional dancer with New York City Ballet, he was a soloist with New York City Ballet. My first, should we say, success story from the Myers um, Scholarship Program. Robert Lyon, he's from around here, local boy. Uh, studied in Gilderland with me, came to class, hung out because his sister was studying ballet and said, well, maybe I'll try it. So he became a dancer, went on to dance with New York City Ballet, Ac at, actually at SPAC for quite a few years, um, is now um, writing for MSNBC, The Maddox Show, and he is our MC for our gala on that's December really, 7th. That's really wonderful. Now, uh, so was he at the beginning of the school? He was one of Yes, the he was actually, when I was teaching at Gilderland Ballet, um, it wasn't my school, I was a guest mm -hmm. uh, teacher there. Uh, that's where I was so teaching. So do you, can you think about this over 25 or 30 years, was it harder to get boys then than now? The same? What, was it, it's different? Was he unusual that he... It was unusual then. He was the exception. Yes. And uh, I don't recall if boys were on scholarship at Gilderland Ballet then when I was teaching there or not. Um, I couldn't tell you that um, because it was before I started my own school. That was the Jurassic period. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> no, no, but just wondering, over the course I of think, uh, 30 years, is dance a little more acceptable? I mean, it's uh, interesting if yes. I'm connected to the high school, there's a dance oh, class yes. I mean, oh, yes. for phys ed. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And also, 
I have uh, two other boys um, who are um, presently on national tours. Uh, Richard Gatta, who is um, will be in our Nutcracker also. He is now the dance captain of Billy Elliot on the national tour, but he is also dancing our Nutcracker this season. Jordan Haskins, who is also from the Art Scholarship Program, will be in Chorus Line right here. Right here at Proctor's. <laughs> right wow. here at Proctor's, another graduate from the Myers uh, Program. He was supposed to do our Nutcracker, but couldn't because of the chorus line, that, that the contract that he got. How exciting is that? Um, so I do believe that there has been an influx of interest. And I do think part of that is, is really due to many, many things in our society. Um, in Europe, it, w it was always very different. Um, artists, especially performing artists and also visual artists, were um, and still are applauded more and supported financially mm -hmm. and emotionally more uh, than they are in the States. But I do think there are, are inroads here now, much yeah, more. Yeah, that's really cool. Now, when we do Nutcracker, I say we because it's in our building, when you do Nutcracker. No, it's we. It's we, we do, do Nutcracker. nutcracker. <laughs> um, we have one performance at school time mm -hmm. where, where schools bus kids in. Um, we do that one a little differently, right? We make yes. it a little shorter. Yes. Taking some scenes out. Yes, it's a condensed version, and it's also read as a story, as it might be around a fireside with children on like a Christmas Eve, um, and using all the wonderful attributes of the theater, of course, with the growing tree and the snow falling and all the special effects, but it but it's a, but it's a condensed version, um, and it's read uh, also. Now, as a story. Uh, is the reading direct from the original book? These excerpts. From the book? Mm, I wouldn't say. I would say it's edited mm -hmm. um, to really sort of fit choreography and time frame. And uh, we always get twenty five hundred kids. I mean, it's great. It's just we love this. We it's love the school show. Day, right? <laughs> we it's love the school the show. In the arcade, yeah, it's just really fun. Really yeah, fun. they know. interact with us, and and we just we just love that. I mean, so this occupies your fall. I know that because auditions start in September. Yes. Um, describe roughly what it takes to do this. Most people who are watching the show don't know what it takes to put a show on. Well. How many people, how many hours? Take, take a gamble of a guess. That's a rough one for me because my hours, just my own hours, are uh, there's so many hats that I wear as a choreographer, as a rehearsal person, as an administrator, as a manager. Um, my own hours, just my own hours, are over 90, actually. Um, and that's really without any exaggeration. Um, and uh, my staff, I have an administrative staff of five. My um, artistic staff is seven. Those are the people that rehearse also the, the variations. So there are variations uh, of second act which have to be rehearsed. So how many rehearsals happen in a week that oh. are tied to Nutcracker? Uh, hmm. Well, I, I haven't added them up because it scares me. Uh, but, but I could, I could do, give you uh, probably 15. 15? Mm -hmm. And roughly there'll be how many dancers in each one of those? Mm, Five? Depending. Oh, no. Flowers has uh, 11, yeah, for average, instance, though. average. Act 1 has, oh my goodness, party scene. Oh, huge. Absolutely huge. So, so again, average. We're just trying to average the um, 10? Uh, 40. Per rehearsal? Yes. So 40 people per rehearsal. Rehearsals are... Two hours? Hour and a half for Act One party scene. Mm -hmm. So hour and a half. So 40, 60 hours, human hours times 15 a week. So it's about 800 human hours it a is. week times 10 weeks. It's a lot. 
So that studio, our our two studios are busy constantly. So maybe eight thousand hours of preparation yes. to get to Nutcracker the stage just for the performers. Yes. And then separate from administration separate from and set all building of the, and the, right. It's just you know for right, people to right, hear and right, to understand. Right, I mean, right. So it's probably a ten or eleven thousand hour enterprise to do three yes. two hour performances. Yes. Right. It's an amazing it's a, thing. It's a tremendous undertaking. And it's an amazing thing for a young person to participate in because they have to witness the from the outside, meaning at the widest part of the atoms being separated, mm -hmm. to all those atoms being pulled together finally to 7.30 p.m. It is. It, the process is, is really a life lesson um, on many levels. I don't think it's just for the children. It's also for the adults that are actors, more in party scenes, shall mm -hmm. we say. I mean, because... Um, you know, we have con we have contracts for them. We have contracts for the children. We have contracts for the professionals, and and there are many many requirements um, that we have to have. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a cast, because if we have so and so Susie Q out for you know three weeks, and then we have right. you know I you can't you just can't get a production together like that, and so. You know, the, the responsibility of being in this kind of production, that life lesson itself is very important when you go into, like, let's say the workforce. It, it's a bigger picture. You learn about the bigger picture. After Nutcracker's over, what's next year like? What's, oh. that, what, what's your uh, uh, out of vacation <laughs> and had a little bit of glug or eggnog? <laughs> Nutcracker and beyond, as we call it. <laughs> yes, um, we have Stories to Dance, which is my absolute favorite, beyond, beyond favorite program. Um, and uh, I believe the date for that here, uh, it, stage date is uh, March 28th or March 29th. And um, I believe we have three schools. Um, and I work with Chris Sheehan who is the education director here, and I love this program, and I feel so grateful to be able to do it, create it, and bring it to the stage and be with those children. On Three uh, different classrooms. Three different classrooms. You work with them extensively, many contact hours. Many contact and hours. And they bring together something they build themselves. Yes, it's their story. They write their story. We edit it with them. They uh, come up with choreographic ideas. We take their choreographic ideas and they try it out on our dancers and they see if it works, if they like it. Um, they see if they like the characters that they created or if they want more characters or less characters. Um, they see if, the, if their story makes sense to the public, if, if it mm. makes sense like a story would. Um, so it's bringing really- And then a finished performance you know, their words to life. A, sh a short version of what you do with the uh, 80,000 hours for Nutcracker. Right, it's a short version, <laughs> a condensed version. Yeah, yeah another yes. life lesson, right. a smaller one. A smaller life lesson, I, I guess, yes. Well, you do a great job, dear. Thank you very oh. much. Thanks for joining us again. Don't miss the Nutcracker at Proctor's this December. And thank you, Darlene, and thank you for joining us here at Impact. Thank you, Phil. Proctors, bringing the best in arts, education, and entertainment.